Hello info person, this is Anton, and in this video, we're going to be discussing a somewhat unusual discovery of an object we've known about for practically two decades, but that turned out to be maybe a little bit more mysterious. The object you see right here, known as 148780 Algira. A type of an object we refer to as KBO, or Kuiper Belt object, with obviously Pluto being the largest of such objects, but that in this case actually seems to be somewhat more mysterious because even though we thought it was a binary, with each of the objects approximately 200 kilometers across, it's actually, possibly, a triple system. In other words, it seems to be a little bit more mysterious and actually adds to the mystery of how a lot of these objects seem to form because quite a few of these objects have been discovered in just the last few years. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but also discuss some of the problems I have with the way this was presented to us through the press release by NASA, which I'll mention in the end. Because here, let's actually start with the discovery and with what all of this means. So first of all, this is pretty far away from us. Approximately 45 astronomical units. And here we have these two icy objects that were collectively named Algira. Named after the god of creation from an aboriginal culture in Australia. And as I mentioned, these objects are not small. They're actually pretty large. The distance between them is approximately 7600 kilometers or 4,700 miles, and each of these objects is over 200 kilometers in size, or approximately 150 miles. And because these objects have been observed for a relatively long time, we actually have data from back in 2001, here it became possible to study their orbit super accurately. And while eventually, through these observations, researchers discovered something somewhat unusual. There was a bit of a deviation, as if something else was in the system. And so in this new study, Maya Nelson and the team from the US in essence confirmed that there was an unusual orbital deviation pretty much every year, as if something was shifting these objects just a little bit. And that was somewhat bizarre because previous observations, especially observations of the albedo or reflectivity of these objects, pretty much confirmed that these objects were almost entirely spherical, which meant that they should have had very stable and almost perfectly circular orbits. And while the only explanation here that kind of, I guess, made sense was that this was not a binary system, this was a hidden triple system. A kind of a cosmic triplet, where one of these objects was actually two objects. And though unusual, this is not unknown to us. As a matter of fact, in the last few years, at least one other similar system has already been discovered. You can actually see it right here, this is known as the Lampo triple system, which in essence is three separate objects, very similar in size to Algira system, that seem to also appear binary, but actually act like a triple system. And this has been officially confirmed a few years back. And though that was also unusual, now scientists are pretty certain this is actually a lot more common than we thought. And so here, based on 17 years of observations by the Hubble telescope, combined with the observations by Keck Observatory in Hawaii, the new study almost definitively confirms the existence of these bizarre triple systems. And I guess more intriguingly, a very similar system has actually been very recently pictured by the Lucy mission. You can learn about this mission in one of the videos in the description. But near the end of 2023, when Lucy was doing a flyby near an object known as Dinkinesh, completely by accident it discovered this. Dinkinesh didn't just have a satellite, that satellite appeared to be a binary system, or to be more exact, a former binary system that has now become one and is referred to as a contact binary. Something that actually happens quite a lot in astronomy, with quite a lot of different stars, and of course, quite a lot of different planetary objects. And one of the most well-known and most surprising contact binaries was pictured by the New Horizons a few years back. Here this was the famous Arakov, that also turned out to be a very similar contact binary, where two objects came so close together that they eventually became one. And so, a very similar object potentially exists here, or maybe this is still a binary that will eventually become a contact binary, because at the moment, due to distances, it's just almost impossible to tell. Here, a single orbital shift is just one pixel, even in the observations from the Hubble Space Telescope. So this is just a little bit too far for a more detailed observation. But because these gravitational parameters can only be explained if this is a triple system, right now this is the best explanation we have. Which basically means that these bizarre triple objects seem to be way more common than we believed. And they don't just exist on the outskirts, they also exist much closer to the sun. But the question here is, why? And well, it turns out that because of this discovery, we actually now have a slightly better explanation for how many of these objects very likely formed. Previously, scientists believed that many of them formed as a result of various collisions. But Algira system, along with similar discoveries, actually tell us that this would be almost impossible. Instead, it actually suggests that a lot of them very likely formed through a direct collapse of a lot of different particles over a very long period of time, 
with pretty much most of these Kuiper Bell objects potentially forming directly from the leftover mass and without any major collisions. And because this seems to be the second such system in the Kuiper Belt, researchers now want to take a look at other binary systems, because approximately 40 other similar systems have already been discovered. But I guess what's really bizarre is that we've only analyzed and taken pictures of several of these Kuiper Belt objects, but strangely enough, a lot of them seem to be this. They seem to be contact binaries, or in some cases, unusual triples. Now obviously this is still very biased, because we've only discovered only like 3000 Kuiper Belt objects, and up to about a million potentially exists on the outskirts, but chances are quite a lot of them are going to be very similar to this, unless I guess we got somehow super lucky. But the thing is, until future observations with the James Webb Space Telescope, it's going to be almost impossible to prove if this is indeed something similar to what you see right here in the system of Dinkinesh. Although it might be possible to measure the orbits more accurately, because right now the system goes through a lot of different occultations, and so thorough observations for the next few years might actually confirm all of this once and for all. But once again, because there seem to be so many contact binaries, and so many unusual binary and triple systems, it basically tells us that collisions on the outskirts are very likely extremely rare, with most of the stuff just forming directly through what's known as gravitational collapse. All of this material just coalesced into one without experiencing too many disturbances, even though obviously we can see some craters right there on the surface. And so for all we know, Algira might be somewhat similar to what you see right here, except that I guess 10 times bigger. This is only about 20 kilometers across, the Algira system is over 200. But we'll definitely discuss the system once again once we get new pictures from the James Webb Space Telescope. But before I finish this video, I wanted to also mention something else. And actually something in regards to how this was communicated by NASA through their initial press release. Here they essentially make it sound like this is an extremely unusual system that's somehow related to the famous three-body problem. The concept that became popularized after a very famous Chinese novel and a very famous TV show. We've actually discussed this in more detail in one of the videos in the description, but in essence, here this is what a three-body problem would be orbiting a center of mass that's constantly shifting, but whose motion is almost impossible to predict because there is really no general way to explain what they're going to be doing. But the thing is, whoever wrote this press release by NASA erroneously refers to this system as a three-body problem as well, and it actually isn't. Because a three-body problem does not have a solution, or at least no general solution, where a single equation could solve everything. In contrast, that's not the case here at all. Because we actually did have a solution in terms of orbital parameters, the only reason scientists discovered that there was a third object is because there were slight deviations in orbit that were also solvable. So this was not a three-body problem at all. And instead we actually refer to these as hierarchical three bodies. Or a hierarchical triple system. A system that does have a solution because here the three bodies orbit in a hierarchical way. We have two bodies orbiting each other, and then we have another body farther away orbiting these two smaller bodies, which is extremely, extremely common in astronomy. We actually see a lot of these multiple star systems pretty much everywhere. And in every single case, we can predict their orbits, and there are general equations that apply to all of them, which in contrast could not be done with a classical three-body problem. Except for, I guess, some cases. Three-body problem is solvable with special case situations. As a matter of fact, in that last video, we've discussed thousands of new solutions that all seem to solve three-body problems. And so, even though it's, I guess, not really a mistake, it's still a little bit erroneous to compare three-body problem from classical physics to what's happening in these triple hierarchical systems. Because in this case, this problem is technically solvable and has been solved. And that's not the first time I've noticed this with a lot of communications by NASA. For example, just over a year ago, I tried to email them asking them why is it that Chandra Space Telescope team was always erroneously reporting distances in billions of light years when they were actually referring to objects whose distances were measured as if the universe was not expanding. Or in other words, they often reported distances as completely incorrect. And there are so many examples, it seems to be actually in every single report, with one of them right here. A report from a galactic cluster that's at a redshift of 0.97 that they claim is 7.7 .7 billion light years away from Earth. Except that it's not. It's almost 11 billion light years away from Earth, and in this case what they're actually referring to is the light travel time, which is 7.7 .7 billion years. And it's actually been bugging me for several months, I even emailed them, with the only answer I got at the end being, I guess we're just doing it because it's easier. 
And so yeah, in terms of science communication, even NASA team has a bit of a problem. But I guess we'll discuss this problem with science communication and maybe some of the future videos. On that note, I guess subscribe because I'm trying to make my best here to make as few mistakes as possible. And I'll always try to correct myself if I do make one. But anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. We'll come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.